Thank you for joining us this, this afternoon as we celebrate an, another important milestone for student success at Montgomery County Community College. College Hall is more than a building, and I think you can see that as you walk through the building at four, nearly 4.15 on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, those of you that have been at the college for a long time know that before the renovation, our students didn't stay and gather in this building at this high rate. Students are everywhere. Usually at this time, we see them, uh, they've left by two o'clock with their car and we wait for the next group of students to come in for the, the, after the evening classes to begin. So for students, faculty, and staff who congregate here, it's a place for learning and gathering and intellectual discovery outside the classroom. The hum in this building is energizing. It's a hum of a very dedicated staff focused on helping every student meet their goals and dedicating, dedicated to helping all of us reach our potential as faculty and staff and administrators. It's the hum of students at all hours. At 7 a.m., they're waiting to get into the library and into the game room and into the student leadership and involvement office. They're waiting, they're in the cafeteria, usually the same cluster of students that we see each morning and still here tonight, into the piano lounge to gather, into the library to study. Our central campus heart is in this building. Our heart for academics with the library. Our heart for students with the new student leadership and involvement spaces that are making such a difference for co-curricular life on our campus. The heart for our enrollment services area and transformed services to students through our integrated one-stop design. Our student success center where our students can come for academic advising and support and our heart for establishing a high-performance workplace with our human resources and finance and administration offices located here. Personally, I'm glad to return to the heart of our campus, our central campus, after a decade, it's hard for me to say that word, a decade, in the East House, away from the hum that so satisfies my passion for advancing our mission. So today is about so much more than rededicating a campus building. I'm pleased to welcome several guests that are with us today. You will hear from many of them representing the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Senator John Rafferty, representing the Montgomery County Commissioners, all three commissioners, Chair Josh Shapiro, Vice Chair Leslie Richards, and Commissioner Bruce Castor. Thank you for being here as well. And the president of our Alumni Association, Reverend Patty Thomas. Patty, thank you for being here. At this time, I invite Mike Daniello, the chairman of the college's board of trustees, to introduce the trustees that are here in attendance and to offer some remarks on behalf of the board of trustees. Mr. Daniello. Thank you, Dr. Stout. Welcome all of you on behalf of our Board of Trustees. Let me take a minute to introduce some of our trustees that are here. Susan Arnhold is here. She's a member of our curriculum committee. Jeff Brandon is here. He is presently a member of our finance committee. And of course, also sitting next to uh, Mr. Brandon is Mr. Michael Bittner, who was my predecessor here uh, as the chairman of the Board of Trustees, and he served the Board of Trustees for a number of years before becoming, a before becoming the chairman. And I will also add, it was under his watch that all the contracts, the uh, master facilities plan were all developed back in 2001, 2000. It was all under his leadership and guidance, which included this college hall. So thank you, Mr. Bittner, for your service. The, the rededication of College Hall, um, to me, is much more than just a building. It is a whole community of people that have come together to make this building, uh, the refurbishing of this building, possible. We have people on our board of trustees who serve without compensation, financial compensation. 
We have members of our, for example, our physical plant committee, where we have an attorney that's been practicing law and real estate development uh, and building and construction uh, enterprises, and we are blessed to have him as the chair of our physical plant committee. That's Mr. Ed Mullen, also on that committee. Um, is a is uh, Mr. Rich uh, Montalbano, who was instrumental and is a vice president of Albert Einstein in developing the Albert Einstein Hospital, the new hospital here. We are lucky and blessed that our commissioners appoint people of that quality to serve on our physical plant committee. We also have a finance committee which has bankers, business people, people in finance like Mr. Jeff Brandon who's on our finance committee. We have Eric Kreshman, who is a very successful businessman and formerly worked uh, with the county. So we have these people. We have people like Tom Freitag, vice president here, who is instrumental in day-to-day -day development of the construction projects that we have here at the college. The administration, who all work together with uh, Mr. Freitag's team. The administrators who worked in this building, who were shuffled back and forth. The students who had to endure the library being shut down and reopened. And it's just wonderful that the whole community came together to make this building, this state-of-the-art building, possible. And it is my belief, and it's always been my belief since I was appointed on the Board of Trustees here, that the students that come here have the right to have a wonderful, full college experience. And that's what they have now with these facilities. Um, as many of you know, I attended Montgomery County Community College from 1976 to 1978 and this building looked rather different when I attended here. And I will tell you that this building went unchanged until all of these renovations took place. I know when we have architects that come into our committee and they talk about the plans, they always refer to these buildings as they were rather utilitarian. That's the description they had, and that's what they were. You came here, you walked up to an office, you did what you needed to do, you paid a bill, you needed to go register, you go to another office, you needed to go to counseling, you go somewhere else. Now it's technology is at its best. We have uh, Dr. Celeste Schwartz here, who was, was integral in putting together the technology component of our building. It was a giant team effort for everyone to come together. And I want to thank all of them. And most importantly, this was all done under our team captain, Dr. Karen Stout, who is, as you know now, a, a superb uh, building developer. <laughs> Construction management, building development, urban planning, that's what Dr. Stout also brings to the college. Um, and I guess the, uh, the, the last thing that I want to say is the Board of Trustees under uh, Mr. Bittner put together a 10-year master facilities plan. And with the completion of Park House Hall, which is now a fabulous building, and the rededication of this facility, I believe that 10-year master facility plan has now been completed. So thank everyone for getting, that, getting this completed. And since, since we have all three commissioners here, I would like to tell everyone to stay tuned because we have more development going on here. Hopefully, we've got some wonderful news that we'll be sharing as time goes on. Um, further development on our next 10-year master facilities plan. So stay tuned. We're going to continue our work here, all the good work that the trustees can do under our leadership of our president, Dr. Stout. So thank all of you for being here. Thank you, Trustee Daniello. Student access and success are really at the heart of our mission. And that's why this full-scale renovation of College Hall was really designed with a goal to facilitate a positive and seamless student experience. So as the home to critical student support services like the Student Success Center and the Brendlinger Library and the cafeteria, College Hall plays a central role in the life of each and every Central Campus student. And the most recent changes further strengthen the impact of the college's student services by strategically uniting them through the building's design and features. At the end of today's formal presentation, you'll have the opportunity to tour the building and to see many of the areas that play a critical role in student success. 
Uh, on the first floor is the student cafeteria and kitchen area, and you all have a map at your seat. Uh, there's the student leadership and involvement area. There's also finance and administration, human resources, public safety, and health and wellness. And the Brendling Library starts on this first floor with our tutoring services and our college archives and our very active uh, student computer lab. Second floor has our enrollment services center, uh, the, also has our student success center, the testing center, the career resource area, an area for students with disabilities, and the main floor of the Brendlinger Library, which is much different than the main floor of the old Brendlinger Library. There aren't many books. There's access to books, but there aren't many physical books. There's a lot of electronic resources. There's food in the library. And there's also a wonderful digital display in the library, a digital gallery that replaces the old gallery that has since moved to the Fine Arts Center. And the top floor is dedicated to the Brendlinger Library with study rooms and reading rooms for students. The, this project planning started, as Trustee Daniello mentioned, back in 2002 with the design of the 10-year master plan. And it was one of the high priorities of that, pro of that plan. ATC was really the first priority because we were short of classroom space. Uh, and in 2008, thanks to the very strong support of State Senator John Rafferty, who also uh, was instrumental in helping us to get funding for the Advanced Technology Center. And Senator, I remember the first tour we took together in that building up in the observatory on the steel before it was fully enclosed. And it was freezing that day. <laughs> we were freezing. Uh, Senator Rafferty helped us to secure state support for this building and the county commissioners matched that state support. So we started this work back in 2006 really with the design, 2008 the funding. Uh, and I just want to really thank before I welcome him to the podium, Senator Rafferty for his just strong support of the college. If uh, we need a heavy lift in Harrisburg, Senator Rafferty is always there for us. So Senator, thank you and welcome to the podium. Thank you, President Stout. It's an honor to be here this evening. And just to liven up the festivities, we're going to reenact last night's debate. Josh Shapiro will play President Obama. I'll be Governor Romney. <laughs> You're going to do <laughs> when Josh was in the House, and he can attest to this when he makes his comments, the House members, the Senate members from Montgomery County, Republican and Democrat, were all passionate about assisting Montgomery County Community College. We recognized it as a vital link to the success of this area. Educating students, providing our economic future leaders, coming right out of here, Montgomery County Community College, and re-educating those that have decided to enter the workforce with a new vocation. Montgomery County Community College has been instrumental and most successful over the years in doing that. I'm very happy to be here tonight in College Hall and to dovetail on Karen's comments about it being the heart of the campus. It is. I always say to young people going off to college, most of what you're going to learn is outside of the books. And they look at you funny and I said, no, it's important to study, it's important to go attend class and hear what the professors are telling you and saying to you but you're going to learn to interact with other people, different ideas, different classes of people, and you're going to have the opportunity to fashion new ideas of your own and to mold your own opinions. And having one of my favorite rooms here, the cafeteria, uh, that was always a chance to sit down and converse with fellow students. And I myself was student body president in my undergraduate career, and uh, so having the student government offices here that was an integral part of it as well because you had people always coming in and out saying, what's going on, what's going on, what's happening here, what are we going to do about this issue? So this is, really is the hub of Montgomery County Community College. And I'm very happy to see the refurbishing of this building and I commend Karen Stout and Michael and the Board of Trustees for their work and their vision in saying that we need to update our facility and make it that much not only efficient for our students but warm, inviting, and comfortable for our students. And one with its atmosphere and the layout invites that give and take and that camaraderie that is so essential in a college education 
and as they develop into young adults to lead us in the future in this great commonwealth in our country. So to Montgomery County Community College, I wish you all the best of success. This has been a true role model for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and how to operate your community colleges. Not only have you had a firebrand for president to lead the way and a very supportive board, but you've had a unique partnership with the Commonwealth and with the Board of Commissioners, with each one ponying up the dollars to help out to make sure that the community college stays at the forefront of the education here and the education offerings here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So best wishes and continued success from Montgomery County Community College. I can say on behalf of the delegation of the Senate and the House of Montgomery County, we stand ready to assist for your further endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Rafferty. The county commissioners have been critical partners uh, in all of the projects here at the college, including this one. And I go back to 2008. Uh, and this building and Park House Hall at the same time were approved by the Commonwealth for funding and the county uh, matched that as is required by the Community College Act. Uh, and this funding was put in place in 2008. Uh, the current commissioners have kept that funding in place and we are very thankful for their support. And with that, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Chairman Josh Shapiro, Vice Chair Leslie Richards and Commissioner Bruce Castor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here with you, and it's an honor uh, to stand here with my colleagues, Commissioner Richards and Commissioner Castor, who you'll hear from in a moment. I want to say just a few words about the individuals up on this stage. Uh, first, about the gentleman who just spoke, and that is Senator Rafferty. Uh, he is someone who is a real leader in Harrisburg. And when Karen talked about how when the college really needs an assist in the Commonwealth, uh, they go to John Rafferty. And I will tell you that it's not just that John understands the importance of Montgomery County Community College, and it's not just that he wants to come up with the funding for the community college, he delivers. And in this environment, it is not easy to deliver for the college, and he has, and he deserves your appreciation and another round of applause. Now, neither John nor Leslie nor Bruce nor I would be standing here if it wasn't for the fact that there's real vision here at the college. And if it wasn't for the fact that there's extraordinary leadership from the board, led by Mike Daniello and the other board members who were here, Mr. Bittner, who led it uh, before, and because of the extraordinary leadership of Karen Stout and her senior team. You see, those of us in government who fight hard for the community college can only do so because the community college has a great vision for where it wants to take itself on behalf of its student body. And so Karen and Mike and to the entire board, thanks for the leadership that you provide always. We appreciate it. And so do the students and the people of Montgomery County. This has been a unique partnership uh, with the county, one that uh, goes back many boards of commissioners and for many generations. And it's a commitment that this Board of Commissioners intends to keep, to continue to partner with the college. And we do so not because we enjoy, although we do, coming to see new, fancy, cutting-edge buildings that are committed, uh, both from an educational standpoint, environmental standpoint, what have you. Uh, and not because we don't uh, enjoy you know, the student achievements, and we love coming here for the graduations and all the different accolades that students get but because this is an environment where you get really a full and complete and round and sound education, where it's not just about what's written in the books or the iPods or iPads or whatever is in the library nowadays, and it's not just about the great lessons that the students teach or the teachers teach the students, it's about the way students can interact with one another. It's about the diverse group of students that come together and learn from each other, as John was talking about earlier. It's about the fact that you can have returning veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan that this college has made a commitment to. And you can have people who can express all different views and come from all different walks of life and come here and enrich one another. This is a place where you not only come to learn lessons from books, but lessons in life. As I'm sure Commissioner Richards will talk about the sustainability of this building from an environmental standpoint, 
I view this college as one that is commitment to the sustainability of individuals throughout our county and throughout our region. Sustainability of their mind, of their spirit, and giving them the skills they need to go forth in this community uh, and to be successful and empower the rest of us. So I want to uh, congratulate uh, the college. I want to commend Senator Rafferty and the board and others who made this possible and let you know that the Montgomery County Commissioners are unified. Actually, we're unified in a whole bunch of things, but we're particularly unified in our efforts to support uh, and sustain this college. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the podium Commissioner Leslie Richards. Thank you all. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, also, uh, I just have to say uh, the leadership here, uh, everybody up here, uh, and the leadership from the staff, not, and not just the board, uh, is, is incredible. I enjoy so much walking into this building. It just feels good. You can feel the energy, and you can see it as well. It's rare that I walk in here and don't bump into somebody uh, who I know from, not from politics, not from activities here at the community college, but just people from my community who are taking courses here, people who I didn't even know who walk through this building uh, on a regular basis, and it's always nice to see. I was particularly uh, pleased to hear about the new library. I have to say, when I was studying environmental science and sustainability issues in my undergrad, the biggest challenge was sneaking coffee and Twizzlers into our library. <laughs> So uh, I, I remember planning these elaborate, uh, how I was going to get it, how I wasn't going to spill the coffee in my backpack, and how I was going to get up to the floor that I like to study on, um, where the, some attractive uh, boys may have been, where they also studied. And uh, just wanted to make sure that everything was, uh, was in order, so I, had, I didn't show up with a big coffee stain and uh, other things smashed into, uh, into my backpack. So I'm happy that that has been solved here. And um, I, I do have to mention the sustainability. I know that uh, Commissioner Shapiro always, uh, always jokes, but it is amazing. And, and one of the things that I just have to draw attention to is reading that 100% of the materials during the demolition were recycled. That is just phenomenal, and that rarely happens, and that is so important uh, for our sustainability. Uh, often you, you read about new buildings being built in sustainable ways, which is fabulous, but the old buildings are being uh, thrown away and, and in landfills and in, and in ways that aren't helping us. So really, uh, the effort there is, is quite remarkable. Uh, I also uh, just want to leave with uh, the fact that after studying in, in the library like here, uh, I ended up joining an engineering firm where I worked on many 10-year facility management plans. And I know all of the work that goes into putting one of those together, all of the thoughts that even go into before you know that you're going to write a 10-year uh, facility management plan. I know all the hard work that goes into implementing such a plan. And I also know the satisfaction and the joy of successfully completing one. So I just have to congratulate everybody here who worked so hard to get it done and to get it done so well. And uh, again, it's just a, a, it's exciting to be here in College Hall with all the bustle of activity here. It's always great uh, to be here. And with that, I'd like to introduce Commissioner Bruce Castor. I don't know how I'm going to top Leslie's cute boys and coffee and Twizzlers, <laughs> so I won't even try. But I, I was immediately, I was immediately concerned about the electronic uh, library. Uh, um, uh, what happens if there's a power failure? Do we have a do we have, do we have, do we have a backup for that? Uh, I'll echo uh, all of the things that uh, the other public officials have said. Uh, it's always great to have Commissioner Shapiro go first because he says all the thank yous you ever need to. So you never have to do it. I never have to do it myself. And as a trial lawyer, I always know it's best to go last. Uh, Mr. Daniello will certainly attest to that fact. It's always best to go last. I won't take any shots at, at uh, Senator Rafferty so that he can stop sweating because it's already it's already too apparent uh, on the uh, pictures as it is. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I've lived in this area my whole life, and uh, I'm almost 51 years old. In a couple of weeks, it'll be my birthday, and uh, so I've lived in this area almost 51 years. And I've driven through, this is obviously a major intersection, and I've seen the college grow up uh, 
from the utilitarian standpoint. Uh, and I've worked for the county for 27 years, so I knew it before it had any curb appeal. And you wonder about that, uh, the idea of curb appeal. I was talking with some of the, other, some of the people involved uh, uh, with the project beforehand. And, um, you know, it, it's great to have a super looking building and, uh, and the cutting edge technology and all of that. But why do you do that? Do you, do you do it because you want your students to have the best possible experience, as, uh, as Mike Daniello said? And you did it. You do it so you want to have the best possible workforce, uh, uh, as uh, some of the other people have said. But you also do it because you want the people who, do, who come here, who work here, and study here to have a pride in coming here, and that creates an infection, an infectious nature about the place, and it uh, it makes people feel part of a community, and then that that helps enhance the experience of, uh, as Senator Rafferty said of uh, interacting with others and uh, developing lasting friendships. And it certainly doesn't hurt that they go back out into the community and say all those things. And people then look at Montgomery County Community College as an alternative uh, to whatever other plans they may have had. They're, they get their education here, and perhaps many of them stay here and supply a workforce uh, to make Montgomery County continue to grow into the uh, wonderful place it has, it has always been and will continue to be. I appreciate you letting me be part of this uh, ceremony, and congratulations, uh, Karen, uh, for uh, a wonderful, a wonderful renovation. So, renovating a nearly 150,000 square foot building while keeping it open, and continuing to provide critical services uh, to our students was no easy task. And I can remember when I announced uh, at an opening day event back in 2008 that we received funding for both Parkhouse Hall and College Hall and that we were going to begin both renovations and keep both buildings open while we performed the renovations. People were very excited that the buildings were going to be renovated. And I said, this is going to be painful. This is going to be painful. So we started the renovation, this project, this renovation in 2009, September 2009. And you'll remember we moved the old children's center, because that's the first move, out of this building into the new children's center uh, and expanded our ability to serve the children of our students from just 42 children to now 84 children. And we're fully subscribed and we were fully subscribed within two years, not the five years that we kind of planned for. Uh, so that just shows you the growing demand uh, for those wraparound services that our students have. And then College Hall started with its renovation and it took place in three stages. And truth be told, there were bumps along the way. But we persevered together and the result of that perseverance is the state-of-the-art facility. There are a lot of people for me to thank for your perseverance. Um, and I want to start, and it, Mike Daniello talked about uh, Vice President Freitag, but really this started before Vice President Freitag joined Montgomery County Community College. This started with uh, the work of three vice presidents that I need to recognize and acknowledge for their work. First, Vice President Les Schwartz, who uh, took on the design work of the project with the architect, uh, without any experience in it and navigated it through and did a superb job in working with the user community. And Celeste, I want to thank you for your work with that. <laughs> Dr. Steady Mono, who was the Vice President of Student Affairs at the time and worked very hard to make sure that the Student Success Center spaces were designed with student success in mind. So Dr. Mono, thank you. Kudos to you. And Dr. Katherine Swanson, who at the time was in charge of enrollment services and really worked with the enrollment services team to design that integrated enrollment services experience with those high tech touches, uh, but those high people touches at the same time that have really made a difference for our students. So I want to thank you as well for your leadership. <laughs> and then there is Tom Freitag's team. The facilities team, Charlie Scandone and Andy Galata, who managed so many of the project logistics. And I want to recognize both of you for your work and leadership as well. 
And then there are those of you that lived in College Hall, <laughs> who dealt with less than ideal conditions, noise, dust, being relocated two and sometimes three times, depending on whether you sat in all three phases, if you were unfortunate enough to have to move three times. But despite all that, you continued to put students first, above anything else. So please join me in giving yourselves a round of applause. And so it's only appropriate that uh, we bring to the podium now one of you who survived uh, all three stages and, and, and did it with extreme grace and is willing to talk about it. <laughs> and that's Cindy Haney, Executive Director of Enrollment Self Services. Please welcome Cindy to the podium. No, uh, we did survive, and I'm happy to talk about it today. And I can see many of you in the room here that did live in the building during the construction. Can you just raise your hand if you were living in the building while it was going on so we can just get an idea? So I wasn't the only one that was left behind to live in the building by myself. Um, but I'm sure if any of you have lived through construction on your home while you lived in it, you can understand the frustrations that occur um, it's exciting and you look forward to the end result and each day there came opportunities as well as challenges and as Dr. Stout said every day we came in with literally dust over every inch of our workspaces I kept a flashlight in my desk for those unexpected power outages um, we had such extreme temperature changes in the building that I swore a tornado was going to break out in the hallway at any moment um, some of us did wear um, ear protection to drown out the sound of incessant concrete hammer drills that would go on and on. Um, one day I came in, and I believe it was right there that there was, because enrollment services was in this space right here, there was a waterfall coming from <laughs> the second floor down over one of our employees' workstations. So that was interesting. Um, uh, Dr. Stout saw walls falling down. Um, we saw a forklift come through a wall over there. And my personal favorite, and I'm sure the others that lived in the building can agree, is when we had absolutely no bathrooms on this floor. And they provided us with, with what was called executive outdoor washrooms. Um, I like to call them porta potties with paneling, okay? <laughs> While most of these were frustrating events, I can say we still did laugh a lot and still managed to provide service to all of our students. My initial involvement began when I was asked to serve on the search committee for the architectural firm that would help us with the redesign of the building. Um, I was a member of the College Hall Steering Committee, and then I did lead the team that helped with the um, design of enrollment services department. So this renovation did give us an opportunity to rethink how we would provide service to our students. And our old services transactional functions were very siloed and segmented. Students were often shuffled from one service window to the next to get from application to registration to payment. So we wanted to figure out where we were and where we wanted to be. So we did pull together this team that consisted of staff from each of the functional areas, admissions, records and registration, financial aid, payment, the call center, student success center. This team consisted of administrators, advisors, counselors, as well as support staff. So we had an opportunity to look at how we would redesign our spaces, but also how we could redesign our processes and how we delivered those services to our students. So as Dr. Stout said, we did integrate all of our transactional functions into one integrated enrollment services department so students could have a much better experience when they were transacting business with the college. And from our point of service surveys that we've been giving to students that visit our new enrollment services department, 96% of them are saying they're satisfied or highly satisfied with their experience. And I'd like to thank my boss, Dr. Katherine Swanson, for allowing me to participate in this project. It was an exciting experience, and I learned more than I ever thought I ever would want to know about construction. 
I'd also like to thank my co-members of the College Hall Steering Committee and specifically like to thank the people that served on the design team for the Integrated Enrollment Services Department. Barbara Lefevre, Carolyn White, Cindy Fricker, Cynthia McCabe, Doug Vore, George Shaw, Joe Mancini, Josh Whitworth, Kathleen Emery, Kelly Sharkey, Nancy Gazin, Nina Geisler, and Saul Finkel. I'd also personally like to thank Charlie Scandown, who sat with me for hours designing temporary workspaces for our teams as we did move several times. Um, Mike Pino, who did get a phone call from me, I swear, every day about the temperature in the building. The IT folks, who I swear moved thousands of pieces of IT equipment more than once. Greg Heimer, who helped us design a state-of-the-art high-tech integrated enrollment service stations upstairs. Tim Callender and Stan Lentz, who helped us with last-minute projects so we could become operational last August. And Andrew Rosner, a student and a part-time employee in IT who programmed our unique line queuing system in enrollment services. And when you take the tour, you'll be able to see that in action. Of course, this is just a small sampling of the people that helped us bring about this amazing change. As you speak to others here today, I'm sure they can name at least a dozen or so people that helped with this project. So now when students enter College Hall, they no longer see this tile wall with a sputtering fountain, but they see a modern welcoming area where they can sit and look out over our beautiful quad. They can see the high-tech service stations, and there's a welcome desk now where someone can greet them and provide them with direction and information. So hopefully you'll have the ability to take the tour and come up and see our new design spaces where we do hope we brought together both form and function and a better experience for our students. Thank you. So thank you, Cindy. I think you earned your window. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to acknowledge everyone on, who served on the steering committee for this project. And for those of you that served on subcommittees or design teams, whatever, if you served on any of the teams that had anything to do with this building. Could you stand so we can acknowledge you and uh, give you a round of applause? So last but not least, knowing that the last speaker is the most important. Our students also had to navigate the logistical challenges to College Hall as the project progressed. And like our employees, and actually, they were much more resilient than our employees. But they found their way, and they knew that the end result, even if they weren't going to see the end result because they were moving on, would benefit them and future students. And our student government leaders over the years of the construction were absolutely superb in helping to design special study spaces and carved out in what was a noisy building, and taking real leadership in helping to make this a comfortable building for students even while we were in construction. So speaking on behalf of the college students today appropriately is Abu Chaudhry. Abu is the president of the Central Campus Student Government Association. He's also active with the International Club, the African American Student League, the Muslim Student Association, and our honor society Phi Theta Kappa. Among many campus organizations, the list is too long for me to go through fully, Abu. Up, I apologize for that. But Abu spent six weeks this summer at Bucknell University as one of only six of our students uh, who represented Montgomery County Community College in Bucknell's Community College Scholar Program. So he's multi-talented, very active, and a wonderful representation of our student body. Abu, welcome to the podium. I've always had a dream to go to a U.S. school. My dream came true when I came to United States from Bangladesh in 2009 and I started the schools at the beginning of 2010. The school I went to in Bangladesh didn't have any computer labs, didn't have a library, didn't have a student access center, didn't have a student leadership office. So I simply didn't know that a school could help you learn 
to become a leader. I didn't know that you could get help from a tutor in school. And I was surprised to learn that a school cares about a student's success. Soon I started to discover all the amazing resources that Montgomery County Community College has to offer me and to all the students. For me, my first and most important discovery was the Learning Assistance Lab, now called Tutorial Services, which is now located on the first floor of the College Hall. I went there with questions, concerns, and most importantly, with the open mind to learn new things. One day, while I was working with my ESL tutor, Bill Simons, I asked him how I could improve my English. I had been in the United States for a year, and I was concerned that my English still wasn't as good as it should be. He asked me to tell him about my friends that I spend most of my time with, well, at that time, most of my friends were either from Bangladesh or from India because I wasn't confident when speaking English. Bill gave me some excellent advice. He said, you know what, uh, you are a cucumber right now, but you are trying to be a pickle. So in order to be a pickle, you have to soak yourself into vinegar. <laughs> he explained that I had to be assimilated with this culture in order to become a better speaker. That was a life-changing advice for me. I started to find the resources that would help me to become pickled. <laughs> At first, I had a hard time finding all these resources because of the renovation to the college hall. Offices were, temporary, were in temporary spaces and often moved around. And we didn't have one stop information slash welcome desk like we have now where I could ask questions. Now that the renovations are complete, we also have a state of the art library, a group of enthusiastic mentors who is always busy giving his students life-changing advice in the Student Success Center. A piano room where the next Mozart can be found. A game room full of gifted gamers accompanied by some excellent pool players and computer lab where hundreds of research papers are written and printed every single day. And what has become one of the most important areas for me, the Student Leadership and Involvement Office, where a diverse group of students work hand in hand and spend countless hours of community service, service projects that help us learn outside of the classroom. That's why for us students, College Hall is not just a building. It is the representation of the ultimate college experience. It is the pickle jar that embraces hundreds of pickles like me. <laughs> On the behalf of the students like me who are living American dream, thank you for supporting Montgomery College. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Abu. I don't know what to say. Best of luck to you in your role with student government this year. I know you're gonna be a terrific leader. I, I have a t-shirt that Abu designed last year. Some of you may have it as well. I, I wear it at night sometimes. It's Abu for president. <laughs> uh, he designed those when he ran for student government president last year.
and it's bright orange, so several of us have them, and that speech just really helps to put, make me feel very proud to wear that. Thank you, and good luck on your pickling journey. <laughs> so in addition to being this physical backbone for student success, this also supports our sustainability initiative, and uh, Commissioner Richards mentioned that that renewable materials were used throughout the project and 100% of the demolished materials were recycled and we are in the process of seeking a lead certification uh, for this project and that really was a major board initiative and their commitment to make sure that even though this was a renovation and not a new building, seeking that lead certification and keeping that commitment to sustainability was important. So with that, I'd like to invite Senator Rafferty and Commissioner Shapiro and Richards and Castor, Trustee Daniello, uh, and Trustees Arnhold uh, and Brandon and Cindy and Abu to join me in unveiling the College Hall rededication plaque. And Mr. Bittner, will you join us as well, given your role as board chair and the original conception of the building? 